So somebody decided to try and turn Salman Rushdie into a tea bag. Uh, did put a few holes in the boy, unfortunately. But what they've said is, in a statement that's just come out is that Iran is not to blame. The only person to blame for getting stabbed up is Salman Rushdie and his supporters. That's fucking amazing, isn't it? The very fact that many years ago he wrote a book called The Satanic Verses where he criticised Islam, all right? And they took umbrage to this, but well, you could say they got really fucking pissed off. And what they did was they put out a fatwa on him, which is anybody can get to him and kill him, kill him, basically. So, yeah, the curse of death was upon him. And this was very real. I remember it as a young lad. I was, what about about 14 when this happened, and I couldn't get my head around. He wrote something nasty in a book, so people have to kill him. Just couldn't get my head around that. I wasn't much of a reader anyway back then, but that's besides the point. Um, and I remember that the, the, these fucking imams, or whatever you want to call him, were shouting and screaming that this man needs to be taken out, that he's offended their prophet. Well, let me tell you, your fucking prophet offends me badly. Any fucking wrong that decides to stick it into a child's a cunt. Any fucking wrong that just creates war out wherever he goes is a cunt. Any wrong who lies is a fucking idiot. Now, just a thought, but it was um, your prophet that while he was spurging out all of his bullshit, right? The scribe actually decided that he worded something incorrectly and picked him up on this. And he said, excuse me, boss, don't you actually mean this? And the main man stood back and he went, yes, you must be a prophet too. At which point, the guy that they were speaking about who'd done all the writing, because he wasn't an illiterate fucking idiot, had decided that because he could form an actual career and sentence and was a, of a relatively good brain, because he probably wasn't one of the inbreds, he decided that actually he wasn't a prophet, for obvious reasons that he wasn't. And he decided that at that point, that the guy who'd been speaking to him with all these alleged words of wisdom was actually full of shit. Good thought. And decided that he wanted nothing more to do with this charlatan fucked up, and trotted off across the desert to join Christianity. And maybe that was when, just, but, you know, hear me out. Maybe that was when that they decided they might want to write rules in that you can't leave Islam for punishment of death because you might be leaving Islam because you realise that it's full of shit. And you might go out and tell other people that it's full of shit. You might go out and tell people that actually it's a death cult that manipulates everybody under it through fear and makes them do whatever it is it wants through pain of death otherwise, right? Just, just a thought. God, call me old fashioned. Right? Now I know that Christianity before you all start half oh, it's not exactly brilliant, and no it's not. Alright? I believe that a lot of the teachings in early Christianity were fucking harsh. But there was a thing called a Reformation, right? That's where Jesus came along and turned it down a bit because it was a bit over the top. Right? And he decided that we wouldn't follow this part, we'd do that, we'd do the other, right? Oh yeah, Islam hasn't done that, has it? No, no, Islam is still based right back in the early doors where it came from and doesn't wish to move. Unfortunately, um, time has. And so we don't want to do the barbaric and fucked up stuff that that death cult wishes us to do. Um, now, I will say that, you know, Islam being the religion of peace, generally about 7,200 of them, when you strapped a bomb to you and walked into an innocent place, is, is probably factually correct. Peace is that is. However, it being a religion of peace, is like saying, say for instance, that Harold Shipman was a caring and loving doctor. It would be almost like saying that Nick Leeson was good to the Bearings Bank. It would be like saying that throwing yourself off a cliff wouldn't fucking hurt. Although, nobody's actually lived to say whether it did or didn't. Never mind. Um, so, yeah. And then I suppose there's going to be some of you that are slightly less fucking screamy shouty at the moment that might well type in with the Christianity is also blown thing up. Well, good observation. Having said that, um, it's a very weird setup over in Ireland where both sides blew each other up and shot at each other and stuff like that over teachings in a book. But I have a feeling, just hear me out, in the same way that your imams read scriptures and decide what they actually mean to the flock and then tell them to go off and do it, like, you know, 
is a fatwa because he's offended our mate Matt Grant Killer, right? Which has obviously been the case. Uh, and uh, yeah, when they read it, and what they do is they interpret it whatever way they feel. Well, this seems to be the case because there's no sort of dilemma. Um, and I believe that also there will be people like Ian Paisley, who was a prod, who may have used his flock um, to further his cause. And his flock bit the loyal servants who obviously wanted to do the work of God and maybe not been too educated, did what they were told and end up getting shit on. Now, the same way that you know, obviously the Catholics over there felt obliged to defend the country and fight against the, the prods, although I think the Catholics are started first, just don't get me on that. But yeah, I get that. Christianity in that particular case was a bit fucking extreme. But generally speaking, on the whole, I don't think it has been. Although, every country that Islam's made it into and started to grow in numbers, there's been trouble. I can think of another religion like that. But anyway, never mind. So, I like to criticise Islam because I believe that you should. In the same way that everybody gets a free pass to criticise Christianity um, and any other religion going, oh, sorry, there is no other religion you can't do, and that's uh, Judaism. Yeah, apparently if you criticise that, you anti-Semite and, uh, you, yeah, yeah. And also you can't go through their history and revise any of that. They, well, actually, I say you can't, but it has been done and they don't like that much either. Uh, but yeah, any religion that you can't poke, poke holes in and actually say, that's bollocks, that's bollocks, that doesn't work, that's not true, right? Uh, you have to ask a question why, because, I mean, if Christianity is robust enough to be able to take the knocks and nobody says shit, Surely every other religion should be as strong and robust as that. Hmm? Well, you'd think so, wouldn't you? Now, I'm not suggesting that these other religions are weak or not, because by saying you can't question them, you're actually saying they're weaker and incapable of taking the knocks, which I don't believe they are. But there you go. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe. Got another long fucking week of this arduous shit. And I'll speak to you in a bit.